Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. I have some work to do. I left things off last week with moving some more things in and trying to make room, and then I had family come in town, and it's I'm picking right up where I left off. There's like a four-day gap, because I was with family, and now I'm back to work. So nothing else has happened. Everything still the same. Haven't had a moment to deal with anything. That's what the plumeria is supposed to look like. It's dropping its leaves to go into its winter rest, but I need to move more plants in. But, um, I don't know where I'm gonna put them, but they're coming in. It's not so much the snow that I'm concerned about, it's the cold. It's supposed to be 14 degrees tonight. That's pushing things. Snow actually insulates the plants, but that's still with plants that are marginally hardy, right? I still have my queen palms outside and then my mule palms, and I need to fix my hot tub today because if I don't, it'll burst and break. So that's, that's gonna be fun. I'm not gonna bore the vlog with that though. That's something I can do separately. For now, I need to just, where am I, where am I going to put six more plants? I also am reminding myself, hey, you know what? It's only gonna be cold for a couple of days. I like to make sure no matter what, there's a pathway here. There is a path. It's just harder to see right now. But there is a path in here. It's only gonna be for a couple days and I can push those back out and I'll have, the problem is things filled up so quickly, I don't even have room to arrange the plants. But I'm gonna do a little bit of work on that. I think I'm just gonna have to throw them on the ground. I don't know what else to do. That's just how, they'll just step over palm trees for a couple days, is what it is, that's all right. But because of the cold, I'm going to go ahead and go get those plants bring them over so at least they're easier to move in. I won't have to go bring each one in individually. They'll be right outside the garage door. That looks weird, doesn't it? Swimming pool with the snow and everything. The heater is on, but I got to get leaves out of the pool because the heater doesn't work with all the... Hey, Tuck Tuck. Hey, Tuck Tuck, you love snow, don't you? You, you, snow doggy. You love the snow. This is an extremely gross, slushy mix. I need to go get some boots. Okay, yeah, go on. Go back, get in the house. Go on. Come on, Toby. Come on. You look at you. Okay. Not gonna shake it off or anything. You just covered in snow. Okay. I did it. <laughs> kind of. I mean, it's a little bit crammed. This is not how things are going to be in here all winter. This is just like a for a couple days, and then I can scoot the big guys back out, and I'll have room to fix up all of all this other stuff going on over here. It's actually the next day. It was so cold. And you know, I moved all of these other plants in here. Moved them all in one time, no big deal. These like what, eight, nine palm trees? I'm hurting today. <laughs> because I uh, learned yesterday that the dolly, that cart that I used to move the plants around, it doesn't really work when the wheels are frozen. So I just had to carry them all in which great exercise. I think being sore the next day is a nice thing because it's like, hey, bonus, got my plants in, don't have to worry about them, at least for a few days, and it builds some muscle. That's good stuff, exercise is good. But um, it was still surprising. It's like I've been doing all this mulching and all these other things, but whole different muscle group being used there because th these are pretty, I, you can't tell because the mule palms are just laying on top of them. These queen palms go all the way across there. And uh, once this is actually done properly for the winter time, There'll be one pot right here, and then the other queen palm pot will actually be down there, so they'll still be like a single line. Like I said, I'll drill a hole somewhere in there so that they can still be watered. I've done this before with them. It works out okay. They just kind of chill for the winter time. The mule palms have gotten tall enough that they don't fit right here anymore because the garage door is right there, so I'm going to have to clear out a spot in the center for them to go in between the two garage doors and just tie the branches up. Also, not a huge deal. No big deal. And then... The windmill palms are in. These were covered in snow yesterday. Oh, and apparently need to do something with my gutters because that's happening right now. I'm pretty sure that that's not what gutters are supposed to do. But I mean, they're also full of ice and the stuff on the roof is melting from the sun. It is currently 12 degrees right now. Very cold, very chilly. Pool heaters still keeping things going. This is just very unusual November extremely unusual. We had snow early last November, last year too, which was also very, very odd, but not, we didn't have these colds though. This is January weather. I'm not, I'm not into this, but it's supposed to warm up sometime soon. Like today's the last cold, cold day. 
and no, I don't typically leave that door open when it's this cold out, but we're vlogging and I'm getting ready to go back out there. While I keep saying this is such unusual weather, it was kind of like this last year too, just not as cold, so maybe this is the new norm. I don't know. I'm not happy about it if that's the case. Since um, I'm not going to be working outside or arranging plants because there's no there's nowhere to walk, I can't really do much if I can't walk around over here. I moved all the other little guys over into this area, so can't like I said I got you gotta be able to move around I can't I can't do anything in there I brought in more plants this year than I think I ever have so that's just one little conundrum thing there it's just the way I see it is bring them in and then decide what's a keeper and what it isn't and like I have a whole like a ton of hibiscus I brought in there are just like regular Lowe's Home Depot hibiscus and those will probably go or I'll cut them back and give them away if somebody else wants them who lives nearby. We'll see. But anyways, what I'm going to do up here. Last week in the vlog, I bought some lights. And I was like, I'm going to hang those up there. And then that didn't happen because, again, more unexpected cold weather happened. But I was thinking, you know, right here I have these spotlights rigged up. And they are so bright. I mean, they penetrate so, so far down. I would actually rather put in another set of these spotlights over on the next stud, which is right around there I can kind of see there's like a white dot on the garage door bracket there's a stud right around there and I think that that would be a better way to go because these shop lights I love them they're great for the plant shelves they just don't light things up very well so the plants need to be very close to them so that's why I'm thinking that this up here that makes more sense so I need to go to the hardware store because I would prefer to use a lamp that has a ceramic base on it and uh, pretty much all of the lamps I have are plastic. So the ceramic bases can handle a little bit more heat. They're not as dangerous when it comes to fires and whatnot. I'm going to shut up, though, because it's getting cold in here. And it's hard to warm this place back up when it's chilly. So let's go to the hardware store. Ooh, and coffee. Oh, got some Starbucks. Haven't had that in a long time. My monthly treat. Treat yourself day. I'm at Home Depot. Car off. I'm in a different... This isn't my car there's like a car swap thing going on right now my little sister bless her heart needs a new light bulb and she was like can someone take my car to the dealership and get like no no sorry not acceptable we're not taking the car to the dealership to get a light bulb so there's like a whole entire is it locked space car how do i lock you did you put the key up a, how do I, okay figured that one out anyways there's a car shuffle going on right now i'm gonna go to AutoZone get a light bulb change a light bulb take the, the dealerships all the way in illinois that's a heck of a commitment for a light bulb okay home depot check out the house plants maybe okay i'm home i the home the music was really loud at home depot so i grabbed a couple bulbs i'll talk about that in a minute the house plants it's just i haven't been into the house plants at home depot in a while they were pretty what they had you know the nice hanging baskets there is a jade pothos which I haven't seen before, but it's just green and cute. And then, you know, standard houseplant things, all those colored cactuses and whatnot, but nothing that jumped out and I thought was really worthy of taking the time to film. However, I did pick up some light bulbs. They didn't have the ones I want. What I want are these Sylvania right here. These Sylvania, they are 20, let me, you guys, hold on. They are the Sylvania, what does that say, 26 watt, 5,000k. I would prefer that they be closer to 65, 67k, but like these have been doing the job for me up there in the ceiling for a, a year. They did great last year and I really liked them. I've been through a lot of what just like these standard LED spotlights and uh, this is the one that I prefer so far. I also, where is, where's the Phillips one? Here it is. I picked up this Phillips spotlight, which I'm not going to be able to return because when I went to open the package, it just it fell to pieces. But, uh, it's very dim. 120 watt replacement, I find that hard to believe. It's not very bright. I can show you, you wanna see? So there's that, I know it's a little bit hard. Can you see through my sun? That doesn't help very much. It's not very bright. It might look kinda of bright here on camera, but it's really not, not compared to what I want. Okay, and then here's that 26 watt Sylvania. I know this is a warm, I need the daylight ones. So on, it's really hard to tell on camera. But this is much brighter as far as like the pen. It, it's a more direct beam. That's what I want. See what that's doing on my hands? I like these better. And this, still not bright enough, but I did like the color on it. So that's something I'll be using for filming videos. I like to 
sometimes need a lot of extra lighting to not have a ton of shit like see all these shadows i have all kinds when i film videos there's lights hanging from up here so i have those on up there and then i have these there's lights everywhere there is there are uh so but the problem though right they didn't have those sylvania ones at home depot i'm home now uh clearly right you can tell that I just looked up online and apparently they have them at a different Home Depot that's also pretty close. But I'm like, I'm already home. I already took my pants off. So now let's just go to the other Home Depot. Maybe the house plants will be better at the other one. Okay, but hold on. Sorry. Caffeine day. Here's that Cree bulb out of the box. The, this guy. And that's what it looks like on. Again, it's hard to tell in videos. I need to get a photometer or something so people can actually, like, I can read the different levels because that would make a big difference. Otherwise, it's like you just kind of have to go with what I say, which isn't the best way to do things, but is what it is right now because I don't have a device to actually measure the light and how it's penetrating. But this, like I said, it has a nice diffuser on it. So I think this actually will be a great bulb to have when I need supplemental lighting. Okay, let's try this again. Um, hell yes. 43 from 1888. It's up there displayed. Yo, I'm buying some bowl. <laughs> oh, I like that. It's not doing that weird flickery thing in person. That's cool. It's not $20 cool, but it's neat. Okay, and I wanted to look at some other things, but honestly, it stinks in here. It smells like skunk. Like, I, it's, someone's smoking nearby. It smells terrible. <laughs> Good song. It looks so weird coming home and seeing the pool with the snow. It's just bizarre. Yeah, the plant situation at the Home Depot, it was nice. You know, they had the hanging baskets like the other one did. Really pretty chlorophyte them. Some spider plants, very heavy, heavy white variegation in them and big thick leaves, which was really pretty. Uh, some, you know, just little house plants, random philodendrons and things like that that were really pretty. Oh, and then this happened. Okay, there is a pothos in here that I really, really want. Look at it. Isn't that beautiful? But how do I... I can't get to it. Yeah, it's gonna take a lot more than some thin plastic to keep me away from a plant that I want. And then, you know, bulbs. They're on clearance, so now I have extras. I have backups, which is good, because, you know, they're LEDs. They still burn out. Like, they don't last as long as they say they do. I mean, hey, 480 a piece, 48, whatever they were, great deal. Isn't it pretty? I'm very happy with all my new light bulbs, by the way. I don't have to go searching for those anymore. That worked out well. The Jesenia Pothos. Now, I have seen these before. I know The tag says Yesenia. I think that's a typo. I think that that's just misspelled because I can't... Yesenia cannot find that anywhere online. Like, it... Yesenia does not exist, but Jessenia with a J, I'm, that, that's all over the place. And I'm pretty sure that's what this is. So I saw one of these a few years ago, didn't get it, and it's kind of been one of those plants where I was like, I kind of wish I had. I know it doesn't look like anything crazy special. This one doesn't have like super intense variegation on it, but the foliage that does have it, it's very pretty. It's a very subtle variegation on this one. You can kind of see that in there. So as it adapts to the grow space, I'll get under bright lights and that'll bring up more variegation. I'll talk about that plant when it when it's perking up a little bit. You like how not long ago in the vlog, I was like, there's so many plants, I don't know what to do. And then there's, I just got more. And that's just, you get used to that. That's just, it's the way things grow around here. Once things are organized, there will be more space. So I'm not really too concerned about that. And I have been thinking I would like to get a dowel hung up here for more hanging baskets. I think that that would be a really good idea. So that might be something I work on today. I don't know if I even have a dowel though. I did that up over here. You can see that right there. And so I have baskets hanging from that one right there. And I could do another one like right between these two. I would prefer it be a little bit more centered over the water down here though. So I don't know. I'm gonna handle this light situation first. And do I? Do I vlog that, by the way? Do you guys care? I mean, you know what's... I'm gonna take what's right here and duplicate that right there. Oh, but the view is actually kind of nice. I managed to go ahead and get this put up here, as you can see. The other one that's over here, I had to... When I put that up last year, I had to actually cut the dome off. I haven't been able to find fixtures like these where the 
base up here separates from the dome, you can do it. Typically, there's like a screw, or it's just a little ring that's up. You can't see it in there, but you turn it, and you can separate the actual socket from the dome, and then you screw them back together. Easy. With these, however, that piece that unscrews is actually attached to the entire socket, so you have to unwire it and rewire the whole thing to get a kind of a headache. So that's why this one over here, I went ahead and just did that with it, whereas this one I didn't have to because it fit in there, so it's fine. But moment of truth, the thing I'm the most worried about with this whole situation is can my breaker handle more watts? I don't know for sure, but let's see. So far, so good. Very, very, oh, look at it. It's so bright. That's exactly what I was going, I mean, that's the point of light bulbs, right? Nothing. I acting like there's some kind of huge revelation here happening. Orchid's still blooming. Look at that. Looking pretty. And when I'm done with, back up, when I'm done with all this, they will be on timer. Sorry, my hand's shaking. Lots of caffeine. It was a bit of a challenge being able to get that ladder in here, but that's one of those things I had to do this now because once the plastic's up, the plastic's going to run all the way from there, all the way around this entire thing, and then down here at the, it'll be right there on the ground. Won't be able to do anything with the ladder anymore once that happens. And yet, look at how, now, these plants down here don't need a lot of light. Like, my Kentia's over here, that scale problem's, like, totally cleared up. That will be going in the house, though. But see how far down that reaches. Now, that's not really enough to probably do anything as far as photosynthesis goes. But the other plants that go in here where the ladder goes are taller plants. So they'll hopefully be benefiting more from that light. Because that's always been an issue. This kind of back corner here is a little bit dark. And uh, under, like, even no matter how bright these are, they're cheap LEDs. They're not even to the ideal spectrum. So I have to make sure that there's an abundance of what's there since it's basically mediocre. You know what I'm saying? It's mediocre lighting. Want your cookies? Yeah, good boy, Tuck. You want your cookies? You can stay on your rug. You're safe. You'll... I know you're safe there. You good boy. You good boy. You say good morning? Yeah, good boy. Another fun thing about being an old dog is I don't make you do anything for treats. Speaking of treats, these right here, I really like these. They only have a few ingredients, pea flour, coconut oil, co canola oil, pumpkin puree, and peanut butter. Oh, they're actually Sam's Club brand, so that's not super helpful. You have to go to Sam's Club again. But they're cheap, they have a ton of things on them, different ingredients, and which is a nifty thing because... <laughs> Sometimes dogs with allergies, that can be an issue, having too many ingredients. Let's see, I spilled some succulents out there. They're annuals, so it's okay. Good boy, Tobes. No, no, you, yeah, you know better. Dap, good boy. Good boy. Getting ready to put the Halloween stuff away and maybe do some Christmas things, but bye, Toby. Because it's, like, still absolutely frigid out there, so I just don't see myself moving those palm trees back out until it warms up, which will be another day. Another day might be too far off to finish the vlog. So, don't you just love this crocodile ferns? That's neither here nor there. So I was going to maybe do some Christmas decorating, get a garland up there and whatnot, but I actually, I'm just thinking out loud right now. Then of this, you don't have to worry about any of this. And making sure I get the pets on camera. People like to see the pets. So there they are. Pumpkin, you wanna say hi? No, I know. You're a busy girl. You're a busy pumpkin. You can stay there. I got things to do. She's such a good girl. Pumpkin. You don't want to say hi to anybody? No? This kitchen has become so messy. Without the dishwasher, it's like a constant shuffle. I mean, you know what it's like. I think just about, don't most people go through some period of their life where they don't have a dishwasher? See so you know what I'm talking about. It's like not a big deal. It's just like things everywhere. And then there's... See, it's just things are messy. I don't do well with messy kitchens. I like the kitchen to be very clean, so there's some work to be done there. However, this is also one of those messes that would take like five minutes, if even, to clean up, so I'm not stressed over it. So I think I'm either going to... You know what? We'll just Let's go work in the garage. There's some more things that need to be done out there. Who's who's let... It's just me. You know, I say let's, but it's, it's just me. New fan. The one I bought last year if you've been subscribed for a while, that that stopped working like within, I don't know, maybe six or seven months. It's still under warranty. Uh, you just have to have the receipt and guess I, I can't find it. I have it. I know I didn't throw it away, but I don't, I don't know where I put it. So I ordered a new fan off of Amazon. I was going to the local hydro store to get these things before, you know, support your local companies and whatnot. But listen, 
here's the thing. If I'm going to have to replace these things every single year, I got to go cheap. And there's a big markup, so I feel a little bit bad about that. But it's like, hey, I can get this for, I think it was, this was less than $40, whereas the other one was like $50 or $60. Didn't last long at all. So this is the Tornado Fan. The other one's the Hurricane. I don't know if they're made by the same company. I just went cheap. I don't know if they're made by the same company or not. Very similar names, but I just, this one, here's why I wanted this one. This one has a remote control. I'm really excited about that because my other fan, that one down there, you can see those strings. I had to rig up strings because it's up so high up there on the ceiling that you had to have some way to be able to adjust the knobs, but that's hard to do when it's 10 feet up in the air. So remote control, good way to go. Yeah, so I was thinking or hoping that this was going to be the same mounting style bracket as the old fan, but you can see it is not. So the fan that was up there has a piece that slides into that bracket and while well, this fan has a piece that has to uh, sit into a bracket like so. So not going to be the quick swap out like I was hoping for, but that's okay. Actually, probably a good thing because I would like the fan being different from the other one because the other fan totally sucked. Or blue. That's more. Actually, not so much. Okay. Anything in here about what I'm supposed to... That, well, that wasn't very useful. Okay, I just had to read a little bit harder. I was just a little bit confused because I'm. it would make sense that this would be the piece that goes up against the wall where these three holes are, but since both ends of this piece fit in here, I was a little bit confused. But I, this... Is this entertaining? Okay, so here's the thing. Something just... I suck at putting in drywall anchors. It's just this wall. I've done it plenty of other times, no problem. This wall hates me. I'm speaking from experience here, now, there are like bigger, like plasticky anchors that I have no issue with, but these little wooden dowel ones never work well for me. So instead of spending like an hour just punching holes in my wall pointlessly, I'm gonna just go get the proper anchor, something I feel a little bit safer with using for something that's motorized and moves around on the wall, just to be safe. Like, it's just, should I have set this up and plugged in to make sure it works first? Ooh, probably. Okay, works. Doesn't fit together all that well, but it does work. And I will say, not as strong as the old one. I don't think it's anywhere near as strong, but it'll do, it'll, it'll get the job done. One thing I did notice when assembling this that's really annoying is there is a teeny, tiny, little screw in here that I got to take out and put through this hole to make it all fit together properly. It's a snug fit. Like it doesn't fit perfectly. And I don't know if that's just because the screw's still up here, so I can't push it down because I was just going to skip that little screw because why? It seems unnecessary. Just like, why didn't they just put another clamp up there? Okay. To be fair, I'm not an engineer. They probably figure that's a safety thing, but the clamps like just don't quite fit this so i'm thinking that that's probably why no there was that was a nice fun update this guy on the tv just said perfunctory the heck is perfunctory pumpkin we gotta look that one up Perf oh hi love you yo oh, he's so sweet pumpkin okay went ahead and looked that one up it's perfunctory i thought he said prefunctory like a pre i don't even know what that would be like a simple, easy, lack of effort, no big deal kind of situation. You such a good girl, again. Do you guys hear all that ruckus? It's from my fish tank over here. I have, that's a great shot of the wall, right? An exhaust fan up here because these lights aren't cooling the way they should, so they keep burning out. Oh, razor blades. I have been meaning to buy razor blades for months. As you can see, months. This stuff that's on the glass, that's not, typical algae that just scrubs off with like a mag oh, sorry snail with a magnet you have to use a razor blade it's called coralline algae and it's very hard it doesn't come off easily you have to use a razor blade and slowly scrape that off and it gets out of control when you don't keep a razor blade nifty to get it off your glass as you can see here tanks happy and healthy but you know there's with 
that's happening. But anyways, as I was saying, there's an exhaust fan up here that wires up here through uh, this light fixture. And it's like, I think it's an air hockey fan. I can't remember, but that light up there, it has one of those sockets in it so you can plug something into it. And I have one of those spotlights I just bought with y'all up there just so when I'm working up here, I can like actually kind of hopefully see what's going on. And it's just, oh, that fan is so loud, but it's because this fan is broken. That's my extra cooling fan. It's just like a cheap, I want to say maybe even dollar store fan. Like maybe we got it from like Dollar General, maybe like five dollars. But anybody who's ever used these lights by Ecotech, you know that they're cooling that just sucks on them. That fan you see there, it actually sucks their air in through that and then out through the top or really the sides, which is dumb because that means it's pulling the cooling air from basically the surface of the water. And guess what? These lights are generally used on salty water. So you have to constantly, I've had to at least constantly clean those fans and have extra exhaust and stuff up there to keep them. It's, I don't, how did we get here? I'm going to the hardware store and I need to get razor blades. Yeah, and I'm thinking I can probably move these windmill palms back out too. It's been, I guess I need to, now that I'm indoors specify when days are changing, it's been like three days since these have been in and it's not as cold anymore. I mean, it's still chilly. But I think the low tonight's like maybe 22 or 25, which they can handle. I usually leave these out into the teens. The only reason I brought them in this time was one, just to be safe, two, because there's going to be a lot of precipitation. And uh, I, the forecasts were just so astronomically different on all my different weather apps. And I was like, it's just, I've had them for so long. They've grown windmill palms this size would cost an absolute fortune. These were like $39.99 a piece, but they were, when I got them, they were nothing. You know, maybe foot and a half, two feet tall. So I want to take care of them. Got to protect the plants. But I think that they can, those can go back out. We're going to have temperatures in the 40s, 50s, and I think even low 60s within the next 10 days. So now that that cold snaps over, I can maybe not have to bushwhack my way out of my garage. Oh, space. That is so nice. I'm actually really excited to get these guys back outside. These, I'm going to hold off until, I don't know, tomorrow the day after. The vlog will be up by then, but dips into the lower 20s I want to avoid. Just with the mule palms, I'm, since they're already in, I may as well, they can take it into the teens just fine, especially once they're used to it, which these are, but I may as well, just to be safe. One thing I will note though, that I should have noted earlier, the thing I dislike about this the most isn't that it's a mess, it's not that the plants are on their side, it's that I feel like it's a safety hazard because there's space heaters in here. Anytime I'm working, sorry about the lighting, I don't really know what to do about that, maybe I'll come over here. Anytime dealing with space heaters, I like to make sure that there's a minimum three to four foot path all the way around everything to all of the exits. So uh, not that's bad. The space heaters are off now, though, because, well, one, because the fan's off, because, you know, what I'm doing, I'm putting up a new fan. They got really hot without something to blow the heat around. And, um, yeah, so, like, there's a path there. Like, there just there needs to be a safety perimeter, and this is in the way of that. That was just something I wanted to make sure to mention in case anybody was like, oh, I can just throw the pump. Like, Jeff did it. No, but that was bad. I shouldn't have done it. I just didn't. That Arctic blast came out of nowhere. I know a lot of you were in a similar situation to me where it was like, uh-oh, what am I going to do? I think they said it was like 3,000 power outages around the country or something. There were some crazy statistics about all the different places that were affected by this. You know, it was, it was a lot of the country, not just St. Louis. A lot of places had it way worse than we did. No, down in Dallas, y'all had a bunch of power outages, I heard. It's crazy stuff this time. At, what? Fan. I need to go to the, what, what, <sighs> then the other reason I like to make sure that they're moved out now, I don't want to spend too much time inside because the foliage is going to get used to that darkness in there, which they don't need to happen because I still, I like to leave these out for a good chunk of the year, unless, you know, it's dropping into the single digits and there's going to be a lot of precipitation. They're in pots, plants in pots are always going to be less hardy. So that's another reason I want to get them back out. I want them to adjust to the darkness because then they'll just bleach out. Hey, remember how pretty this all was like a week or two ago? See how that held up through those single digits. I mean, it's still kind of colorful, but well, no, not it. The leaves are gone. That's what happens. Um, does anybody remember why I'm here? Ooh, pledge. I always forget to get pledge when I'm here. I like the, am I really talking about cleaner? I like it because I can use it on the counter and on the stovetop, the glass cooktop. I know, super exciting stuff. 
Also, this is kind of a preview of what's to come in the winter time. It's hard to vlog in the winter, so <laughs> there you go. Shopping for cleaning products, drywall anchors, and um, razor blades. Where's the razor blade department? Found the razor blade department. I was going to just get like a refill thing, but then I was looking at this guy right here. It's like, this has a nice grip to it. I have like a special one made for the tank, but it's all old and busted up. I'm like, I feel like this would be fine. Eh, wait, what? What's wrong with it? Hmm. Cancer and reproductive harm. Uh, why? Okay, this one. Same company. No warnings though, so I guess it's safe. But, um, it doesn't... Doesn't actually come with a blade that I can see inside of the... Maybe it's, like, tucked in... I have no idea. I'm going to put that back up with the warning out so that everyone knows. You know, I know California and the P65, they put that label on everything, but I didn't see it on the other stuff over here, so don't know what that's about. My cart looks like a narwhal. Um, a narwhal cart, anyone? I think one of my favorite things about the holiday might be all the little gift sets. Like, look at that. It's fantastic. I don't need it, but I still want to get it. I probably have like 10 of all these things, but such a good time to get deals on things. And then other things, they mark up and become extremely expensive. There's not a lot of logic behind it, but I just, you know what it is? It's tools. I just, I like looking at tools. Oh, Yeah, Sun Tan Pumpkin. Hey, sweetie. Yeah, you're so sweet. Oh, you're warm. Nice and toasty. You good girl. Hey, Tobes. How you doing? Lazy day? All right, now that I'm home, I know I'm supposed to be putting up a fan right now, but I'm so excited that I finally remembered to buy this razor blade. I gotta look at that. Oh, it just comes off like butter. It's very careful. It'll only go up and down, never side to side. Don't want to scratch the glass up. Hey, I'd say that's a pretty good improvement, wouldn't you? It took like mm, no, four minutes, if even. I still need to get down, get kind of close into the sand. Wow, the LEDs don't go over very well on camera and say it would be nice if the fish wouldn't hide spend all this time hey i see you i see you he's like oh no you saw yeah i see you that tang uh, i got i'm not gonna call it a rescue because it wasn't like an adoption fish but it was at petco and had a really really bad lateral line and uh, i knew the people who were working there and they're like hey what do you think like what, what 10 bucks take it home you can fix them and i said sure brought them home and just treated it like a normal tang lots of greens and whatnot and i mean by greens i mean mostly seaweed and like within a couple months good as new happy tang so but that's everything else is hiding yeah everybody's hiding right now look at you being brave <laughs> look at that isn't that just a thing of beauty yeah this wall's all torn up from all the different fans i've had to put up here the wall hanging fans just don't seem to last very long the one I originally had, I don't remember the name of, but it lasted for a few years. And when I went to the hydro store to get a new fan last year, they're like, I can't believe that fan lasted you so long. Telling me how people are always complaining about that particular fan burning out quickly. They sold me the other one, the hurricane fan, the one I'm replacing right now. And they said that one lasts a lot longer and that one only lasted six months. You just, you know, you can't trust anything these days. One problem I had here was I needed a 5 16 um, drill bit and I, my bits aren't labeled, so I just kind of had to guess. You know those, like, pasta things they make where you put the noodles through the holes to determine your serving sizes? They need that for drill bits. Does that exist? I'm just saying, I think that would be nifty. Okay, so now I just need to put this guy right there and screw it in. And done. Easy. Yeah, there we go. Nice and sturdy. Oh, and if anyone was wondering, these were the I'm not like saying these are the best or anything, it's just I usually have the best luck with these drywall anchors. These little peg ones, like I said before, they just said they never work out well for me. But these, you know, you just drill your hole and there's a little like red piece right here. You tap that in to make them pop open. You throw your screw in. Really easy, they're sturdy. I mean, 143, I mean, I don't, I don't trust that claim at all, but they just don't strip out or strip out. The other ones, they tend to sometimes not open. That's what I was trying to say. Okay, that's enough of that boringness. Let's hang this up. Let's. Wish it was let's. It's just me here right now. I'm all by myself. So that piece right there should just lock right on there. 
Okay, that's that's that. It was exciting, right? Great shot. Right into the blades of the fan. I'm thinking there was some plastic on. Oh, there is. There we go. And peel that off. I'm going to give this a little bit of a tilt. Maybe not quite that much. The whole point of the fan is to blow the hot air back down, so it keeps the air circulating. You know, see, if it doesn't have some kind of an angle coming down, then that's not really going to be very beneficial for moving the hot air that rises up back down. There we go. So the fan is finally plugged in, and now let's just see here. I haven't even read this. And see how it works. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. What? What's going on? Hello? Oh, come on. Okay, so it would appear this, where it says on slash speed and off, so this right here is the on button, and there's just a single button for the... So I was just pressing the wrong buttons. See there? On. Nice. There we go. And... Swing. Oscillation. Yeah, there we go. Oh, it feels so good in here now. See, it has a timer. Now, this doesn't have as many settings to it as my other fan did. The other one, you could, like, adjust, like, how much it would swing. And the fan I had before that actually moved in more of a circular pattern, which was pretty cool. However, with the orchids and everything over here, like, that was a bit much because it just kind of blew onto them constantly. And now what I'm curious about is standing over here to see how much air is getting moved. Yeah, it's just, it's not quite as strong as the other one. I would like to see more air moving over here. I think I'll just have to point it down a little bit further because it's still going to do the trick. It's just not quite as strong. That's all right. It has a setting right here that I thought was kind of cool. Natural wind. The fan delivers airflow consistent with natural wind. Basically, it seems like it just kind of adjusts the power, which, I mean, that's neat. I can give that a try. I can't read any of those things from down here, so once this ladder's not over here, it's going to be kind of hard to tell what setting it's on. I should probably write down what this, can you, this might be hard to hear me. It looks like this right here says nature. They look like they're lit up, don't they? I mean, this one's lit up the most. You can't tell that it is. So how do I change that to uh, nature? Fans on high. And then this up here is a timer. Okay, I'm back down now. That was probably really loud and obnoxious, I'm sorry. Yeah, so it's like sort of cycling through the low, medium, and high, which is cool, I suppose, but maybe a little bit unnecessary, at least for what I'm doing out here. I can think of instances where that would be useful though, because you don't always want constant air blowing on the foliage. It'll blow the moisture out of the leaves, that's why, you know, it's nice to have something that oscillates, gives them a little bit of a break. And so I guess the theory behind having this nature mode is that it will somehow reduce that, right? Maybe? Yeah, the nature mode's neat and everything, but I don't need that right now. We just, just be a normal fan. The remote control isn't super responsive. That's one thing I'll say. There's fresh batteries in here. And I had to push that button. Push? Push. I had to push the button several times to get it to do anything where you know the other one though i had to have those strings like i talked about up there which was reliable don't have to change any batteries so that's nice but uh i'm i'm really into this remote feature that's nice and i went ahead and tilted that down a little bit more so we can get a better idea of how that's going to look here in just a moment seeing movement good and that helps keep the space a lot warmer too, just by having something to keep that hot air that wants to go up and escape. That's why I have that foil stuff up here, but it'll help push that all right back down. Keep the space warmer. Glad to have that done. That was kind of a thorn in my side. You know, one of those things where it's like, I know I need to do this, but I just don't feel like it. I've had the fan for several weeks, just hadn't gotten around to hanging it up. So that's good to have that done. If, if you ever notice, pretty much anything that requires to get out my tiny screwdrivers is probably something that's gonna tick me off. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah, I tend to think about things too much. I'll go ahead and get things cleaned up over here. Oh, and also, uh, does anybody know what this is? I don't. No clue. And the directions don't say anything about this part. I used all the parts that are in that part figure, but not, not this one. 
I don't, I have no idea what this is or what it goes to. No mention of it in here. Nothing. Not a thing. So, no clue. There's this thing right here, which is the blade securing cap, but I use that. It's already in there. So, I don't know. And there's nothing else in here about what that might be. So, oh well. Okay. Like I said, glad to have that done. That was something I had to get done before I have all the plastic up just because it gets really, really, really hard to get a ladder in here when I have a big sheet of plastic here with a zipper door on it. It's hard to pull that through. Hey, look at Brave Little Toaster. These guys have been so timid since I brought them in. They're starting to come back out. That's pretty normal, really. You change their environment up and they sort of freak out. The Water Lily. Eh, I don't know. I don't really see that working out, but it might. I don't know. I had it tucked back in this corner for a little while, and uh, I realized that's not going to work because that's where I lower these orchids down to water them. So it would just be a huge tangled mess. Wouldn't make sense to have that there because it would just rip all the pads off, even though most of the pads have come off. Now, that's not terribly unusual when you move a lily, a lily pad, and change up its conditions a little bit. Sometimes they'll drop their old leaves. It has new ones coming up from the bottom, but still, I don't know. Like, I feel like I should probably just go ahead and cut it back and store it for the winter time. That might be easier. But I, people had suggested, and it's a great idea to just set this in a larger pot so that that water flow isn't hitting it. Fantastic idea. I really like that idea. But this water's, I don't know, about 30 inches deep, and that would take an absolutely massive pot. It would take up too much real estate in here, so I don't see myself doing that. I thought about, like, putting some, like, bamboo around it and just wrapping some netting or something. I was like, this is, it's turning to be a bit much for something that I could just allow to rest for the winter time. So that's probably what I'll do there. The water's a little bit murky because I'm soaking some driftwood in here that's floating. So I put that in here so it can soak, and that's actually going to go on my tank inside. It's not really, you shouldn't really soak it in the environment with the fish. Like generally you do that somewhere else, but I'm like, it's fine. They'll be okay. And then lastly, I also have one more of these bulb adapters that goes into the dome like I used up over here for both of these guys, for those fixtures. I was debating maybe trying my luck and putting up one more of these fixtures since I have all those bulbs, but I don't know. I just don't think the breaker can handle much more. So I'm gonna hold off on that until next week. I'm going to get the plans pushed back out. The, this vlog will be out just a few hours after right now. So like, i got to wrap it up and shut up and get to doing some other things that I'll do next week. It's just going to be like I'll get those shelves organized and relit and, you know, maybe get the plastic hung up. I'd like to get that done. Just, you know, taking it, taking my time. There's no rush at this point. Like I said, the temperatures outside are supposed to be fairly mild. So I just want to get things clean and tidied and set up and cut. I have a lot of hibiscus to cut back. Which isn't like a daunting task or anything. It's just something I need to get done. Never a shortage of things to do. Look at, there's that new leaf opened up over here. I love how the foliage on these guys, it starts out kind of small and then it just expands and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's so much fun to watch. And y'all can stop calling my Monstera leggy. Don't be shaming my Monstera. People sending me comments saying it's pretty leggy, you should cut it back and then send me a cutting. No, it's a vine. It's fine. It doesn't need to be. I mean, I need to put a new support in there because it's coming over and getting wonky. That part's not good, but I have no problem with that bottom part being bare. I want this to get nice and tall. I want to have a great big gigantic monstera tree, which won't happen. It hits. They're not trees. I know they're not trees. You, you get what I'm saying, though. I want it to just grow up and be great big grand monstera. So that little bareness down there, I don't care about that. That's no big deal. <laughs> Anyways, like I was saying, I'm going to wrap things up. I have some other things that I need to get done and need to edit this video too. I was going to release that lighting video this week, but it just, it needs too much work. I think I might need to redo the whole thing. So it's just supposed to be a casual video. And I talked about a lot of things and didn't explain them at all, like par and things like that. And I was like, I just, it, lighting is a complicated subject. And if you don't get it right, then the trolls will let you know. And I'm just not in the mood to deal with that, to be honest. So because some things weren't elaborated on, quite as much as I would like them to be. I just think it might be more confusing than helpful. Does that make sense? It's just a vlog. I changed a light bulb and then talked about what I do out here for lighting for a little while. It's pretty much it. I'll play around with it, see what I can do, see if I can fix it up. I am 
pretty excited though about my Yesenia. My Yesenia. Maybe it's pronounced Yesenia. Maybe that's why that happened. I don't know. I am excited about this Pothos. I'm excited for it to call her up and show off that faint variegation, which like you can barely even see under this lighting. Like it's barely there at all. But I swear, it's a very pretty Pothos once it colors up. This poor string of bananas. It went through it. This is, a lot of this is squirrel damage. I got the squirrels digging in there and pulling through it, but there's new growth coming up, so it's recovering okay from that. Same thing with my burrow's tail. I brought this inside and it was like, oh, I'm so much happier in here. Go figure. That doesn't surprise me. It was a really, really wet summer and I had it underneath an umbrella so it wouldn't be sopping wet all the time, but I just don't think that that was quite enough for it. Maybe just too humid or whatever and even just the time of year can make a difference in the growth on these guys but it's got lots and lots of fun new stuff coming out looking good okay this what this isn't a plant tour i don't know what just happened like i said hope everybody's doing well uh my social media is linked down below i use instagram way more than anything else and don't forget to leave the video a like makes a big difference for the videos and for the channel so thank you where'd the fish grow and subscribe as well and hit that notification bell that way you'll know when new videos come out and of course as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye